All right. Uh, so, welcome to uh, kind of a podcast. This was brought up um, recently. Uh, there was some discussion about this. A, a paper just came out um, in the Journal of Nutrition, um, and I kind of touched on this a little bit. But this is this the issue here is health at every size, and how to manage it. So I, I posted on Twitter an issue where. Um, I met with an internal medicine physician and they were mentioning that they kind of struggled with what to do with patients who come in with an example that was used was a BMI over 50. And we have, we have a movement that's, I support, I support the concept in health at every size. And I also support the concept that, um, Obesity, whatever we define that as, I'm open to redefining. Uh, But, you know, a basic concept is that uh, obesity brings with it, uh, which for the sake of this part of the discussion, we'll say it's as, as diagnosed with a BMI over 30. But the concept is that obesity however it's defined, brings about metabolic, uh, cardiovascular, uh, osteopathic complications in which there's increased risks for um, knee injuries, uh, diabetes, potentially certain types of cancer, heart disease, increased risk for uh, blood flow, COPD, sleep apnea, those types of things. So that's kind of the the, the backstory. Um, and, and one of the things that that I think, you know, I'm coming at this from a scientist. I don't treat, I don't see patients. I gather information and try to make sense of it. And you know, I think it's so. So what I've seen, what I've what I've observed in dealing with this, teaching this, you know, and I think K-State's one of the few institutions in the United States that, that has an energy balance class, or has had, you know, we don't have it anymore uh, due to budget cuts. Uh, so I had to sh- shift to uh, other courses, but uh, so that's, you know, and so in essence, what does that mean? It, it means that I think some people maybe studying this from a limited perspective versus looking at it from a broader perspective and a uh, an obesitology or body compositionology, if you will, versus a, a single lecture in a single class that a student may see. And this may be something they get from a textbook or they, they pull from somebody else and they're, they're transferring that information to, to the class versus um, having a class that's that's devoted, the whole semester is devoted to, to several aspects of this, and so that's that's kind of my perspective on this. Um, also, those of you may may know about um, the Twinkie diet and the issues that I've had, and the, the personal issues that I've had, and so some of those things will come out too. So, health at every size, obesity, is one right, is one wrong, uh, and I, I think a lot depends on the context of that. And because I think some people, the discussion I had with the the physician was, I think some people on the health at every size will say, I don't need to change this because, and they may use it as a way to justify or rationalize certain behaviors when those certain behaviors may not be beneficial. Likewise, I see sometimes what happens in type 2 diabetes that you may have patients that will uh, pre-inject insulin and pre-inject a dose where they, I say pre-inject, but they're, they're getting ready to eat or they're getting ready to do something. And, and based upon that something, they uh, are preparing. Uh, this is either late stage type 2 or type 1. And so the insulin levels may go up and say, so it may drive blood glucose down and say, oh, I need, I need to eat something. 
and you either treat something with sugar, those kinds of things in which uh, there may be a, that, that dose of insulin that they injected uh, with intent or, or not, or by mistake, uh, leads to uh, a, a greater glucose uptake and decreased blood glucose getting to where it's hypoglycemia now, and they have to replenish that. So just going to give a potentially similar, similar perspective. Likewise, on the physician side, the healthcare provider side, you know, this is something that I, that I, I picked up several years ago, and this is something I noticed, regardless of what you think of Dr. Oz, I think you may know my, my take on it on him and, and what how he treated me. But it's one of those things where what came to light or the, the, the thing that resonated with me was how many healthy, obese people go see their cardiologist or go see a cardiologist or go see a nephrologist or go see an internal medicine doc. None. If they're healthy, they're not going to. And so I think one of the things that, that may shade the the vision or perspective of healthcare providers is the majority of the patients they may see may be obese. Whether it's BMI 30, BMI 40, BMI 50, whatever. And so since those are the people they may see more often, they may have this concept of, well, hmm, they're, they're at increased risk for this or they're at increased risk for that versus seeing. So the first thing they may see, so this is where I have issues with and I support the HAES, and I have issues with the obesity, is somebody you get judged based upon, oh, well, you see it all the time with um, celebrities. So-and-so eats too many snacks. So-and-so needs to, to do this. And this is one of the things I get at, you know, basically fat shaming. And it goes on. And uh, a person's size is a person's size. A person's color is a person's color. A person It's taking that prejudgment and attaching a health, especially from a healthcare provider, perspective to it. It's if you did this, if you lost weight, you would be you'd do better. And this is where I, I do support the health therapy size thing is it's what can I do readily? And so one of the aspects is getting at I think sometimes some some physicians it's like going from you got to lose 200 pounds. It's like 200. I weigh 400. That's half. That's a lot. And so you're asking potentially a lot of people to make huge changes that, you know, if you said, you know, hey, let's work on, let's work on 2%. Let's lose 10, let's lose 10 pounds this year. Whatever the, whatever a goal. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. Everybody's case is different, but change that target to something more realistic or even, and this is why, again, I support health therapy size, because maybe if you say, you know what, let's not worry about your weight. Let's get you being more physically active, and maybe let's, let's increase your dietary fiber a little bit, or whatever the, the, the dietetics, the, diet, the nutrition side needs to be changed, however that's viewed and whatever the assessments are. Because, you know, if you, if you focus on the behaviors, the body composition of weight may follow without focusing on the weight and focusing on the scale. And so, you know, if you say, let's change dietary fiber, you know, let's, hey, hey can you, what do you think about getting 20 minutes of workout in two or three days a week? Is that doable? What about 10? You know, just start somewhere. And, and I think that may lead to some, some A, some confidence in, in being able to change their behavior versus I think one of the routine things is when you focus on weight first, it's because so many things can can affect weight, you know, water, uh, working out, those kind of things, depending upon issues and then hunger. You know, it depends on what time you weigh and people may not understand, you know, weighing in the morning versus weighing in, in the evening shifts. And that's like, oh, I gained so much. Oh, this was a terrible day. I, I gained so, such and such weight. And it's like most people are going to gain weight if they weigh themselves in the morning and then weigh themselves again at night as human nature. Uh, the issue is, you know, when you get up in the morning and you void, what's your weight then? You know, so, so picking a similar time of the day to weigh, I think that's important. 
Um, so that's kind of the, the backdrop. Um, so what are the, the pros and cons of obesity? You know, I think one of the issues with obesity, and this is A, has to do with BMI, which clinically, fantastic. Hop on the scale. How tall are you? Done. It's one of the easiest assessments that a, that a clinic can do. Because most everybody has a scale, most everybody has a, a stadiometer or a way to measure height. Um, I mean, even if you just measure, I mean, in, when you're working with adults until they get older, you really don't have to measure. You don't have to measure height once, in essence. Uh, but the issues I have are when is it measured? What you know, seasonally weights fluctuate. And I think a lot of times weight when I, you know, this is this is an issue I have with the healthcare community. Yeah, I'm talking to you, docs. Uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, whatever. Um, I've not, I've never been asked to take my wallet, my phone, my belt, or my shoes off. And for guys, that can be, you know, and <laughs> I'm like my dad, I guess. And so maybe I, this, I may be uh, sharing my age and those kinds of things, but. You know, I, I tend to not be as current as maybe some of uh, the younger men, but uh, tend to, or I have carried change, keys. You know, our men use our pockets as our purse. So whatever's in a woman's purse that they may set off to the side, we carry it. And so some of those things can, can weigh a lot. The other thing is uh, in summer, Maybe you're wearing flip-flop shorts and a t-shirt, you know, basically single layer clothes, and then maybe no socks or shoes. In the winter, you may be wearing boots, maybe snow, cold, whatever, jeans, three layers of like a sweatshirt, sweater, hoodie, whatever, long pants, whatever. And that alone can, can vary three to four pounds. And so it may look like, oh, your weight's going up. And then that all of a sudden triggers something in the, the person that says, oh, I better do something. I'm, ah. Uh, and then they may feel guilt, they may feel shame, those kinds of things. And, and that's not necessarily the, the purpose of the healthcare provider, because I think that's part of that societal, because we have a war on obesity. Um, and that was one of the things, too, that I, that I, I have with the, the anti-obesity perspective is it's fat is bad, this is bad. And we get to this good, bad eating, you know, don't do cardio, do cardio, don't do way heavy weights, do heavy weight, whatever, because you'll change your body comp. And it's all based upon obesity, body fat, looks, potentially aesthetics, those kinds of things. And I think that's, I think that's dangerous. Um, you know, and the other thing is, you know, from an age and a life span perspective, you know, I said we only have to measure height once. That's in an adult, you know, for, for youth. You have to do for Tanner stages and for other aspects to get the BMI to height ratio or the, the weight to height ratio because height changes, weight changes over time, also changes over time with, with older adults. We tend to shrink um, due, to, <laughs> due to gravitational joint issues, et cetera. Um, you know, and then you get in the issue of, you know, wheelchairs and those kinds of things and tends to create some. Uh, measuring issues and then assumptions of BMI and how, how good is it. Um, so typical message is weighing less is better. And I think that poses problems across time because, you know, having worked with, with some older adults, you know, there's some older adults that, that think they may need to lose weight when in actu actually they don't. You know, and what's one of the, the key factors for determining uh, the health of an older adult? Unintentional weight loss. And um, so on that note, oops, still got to get used to this, this camera thing. Um, a study, of, this was several years ago. So this is almost 20 years ago. Um, this study showed that uh, it was looking at intent. You know, people intend to lose weight versus they lose weight, but they don't intend to. The unintentional weight loss tends to be more problematic um, than intended weight loss. And so they may lose the same amount of weight. And so some of them say, hey, you know, you see it. You get the flu, you get a cold sometimes, whatever. Um, 
you can have weight loss. Is that the kind of weight loss? Is that how you want to achieve weight loss? No, but I'm, I would not be surprised if there are some people who say, hey, I'm going to use this to kickstart my weight loss program of the flu. So anyway, uh, food poisoning, whatever, anything in which you rapidly lose two, three, four, five pounds in a span of a couple of days. Most of that's food or fluid um, or fecal matter if it's diarrhea um, versus uh, converting solid, I say solid, um, lipid droplet, in essence, into CO2 um, or a carbohydrate starch into CO2. Um, so, so that's kind of some, some of the issues. HAES, health at every size issue, again, I, said, I alluded a little bit to it. I mean, so what I like about it is, I think, and Yanni Friedhoff, and this was reposted again recently, um, kind of has a notion, and, and I agree with it. It's, you know, a person's weight at which they feel the healthiest, I think, is their healthiest weight. Now, again, what I, what I don't like to get into is when you, th- there is a point at which I think people need to be honest with themselves and come to the realization that, you know, maybe weighing X, 500, 600, whatever pounds, being bedridden, being uh, unable to walk, uh, maybe being able to stand, but basically being Im- immobile from a self-propulsion, self-propulsion perspective with their, their legs, wheelchair being different, uh, you know, it could be problematic. I mean, when you get bedridden because of weight, you know, you get sores, um, their hygiene issues, feeding, work, societal issues, being unable to... To potentially, potentially contribute to society. I'm um, not saying that you can't, but the risks of those things go up. And so it's being honest with yourself to say, you know, am I the healthiest that I can be, that I should be? Uh, so, well, that bring and that puts puts me back to some of the TV shows that have centered around this uh, are informative. Uh, in in watching one a few years ago, there was a, a gentleman in which. Uh, he was 600, 700 pounds, went to the, uh, the bariatric facility to, for basically long-term, a long-term care facility for obese people. And I think he was 700 pounds. They, they had to widen the doorway. They made a special wheelchair for him. Um, you know, in essence, invested like $10,000 on accommodations for this, this man. They made changes diet in particular was the one I think that kind of pushed him over the edge and he left. He, he checked out. And so it's like, is that okay that he checked out? It's interesting. And so again, it, it, it comes back to trying to work with people with where they are. I agree more with that than saying, Hey, you know what? You need to be on your, you need to be at a BMI of 25. You're at a BMI of 70 or 60 or 50 or 40, whatever, whatever it happens to be. What are we going to do to get you there? And so, um, and what we see, bariatric surgery are options. There, there are new medications that are options. I'm not for or against any of those. That's that's a decision to be made between the healthcare community and that patient. Um, I've seen some good things and I've seen some not so good things. Um, and so, it's that's that. Those are kind of individual decisions. But kind of what I will say, I, I do think. So, getting back specifically to BMI. I think what I will say is my my issue is how it's determined. How are these ranges determined? You know, you have quote unquote normal, healthy weight, underweight, overweight, obese, morbid obese, classification one, classification two, etc. I think when when looking at the data, and a lot of the data are either J shaped, U shaped, whatever shaped. So what you can have is somebody with a BMI of 20, which would be considered normal and healthy. People say, hey, that's a healthy weight. Being potentially similar to a BMI of 30 as far as a mortality outcome. Now, we can debate if we want to look at all-cause mortality. And that's where we have to get at, too, is are we looking at um, all-cause mortality, risk for cancer, risk for stroke, risk for whatever, and do we, are we able to pick and choose? I have cancer. Not my, cho- I didn't choose that. Um, 
So it's one of those things where sometimes we look at things and we may cherry pick as a scientist or as a clinician or as a patient things. Hey, you know what? This BMI is healthy for me because it's it's the lowest risk of stroke. So it's a, a BMI of 26. I'm, not, I'm picking a disease and I'm picking a number. Um, 26, so that's good. Oh, well, by the way, that, that increases your risk for X, Y, Z. Is that okay with you? Oh, maybe not. Um, you know, and so the other aspect is that this is one of many uh, conditions. And um, so it's, that is conditions as far as diet, lifestyle, gen- genetics, whatever the case may be as far as putting somebody at risk for, for something. Um, so, um, so I think my desire would be that you get a definition of obesity that's more, uh, that, that has fewer issues in which people can poke holes and say, you know, that you give like overweight, you know, I, there, there are data, and you can we can parse out when somebody may be more at risk of dying and things like that. So you look, if you look at some of the data, they'll say if keeping your BMI below X for your lifetime is reduces the risk of mortality, disease, morbidity, et cetera, relative to somebody who had a BMI of 35 and reduced it to 25. Okay, and I'm fine having that, that discussion. But usually that's, that's a discussion that's after the fact. And so that doesn't help the person with a BMI of 35 to say, oh, it's too bad you're 35, you'd live a lot longer. That's not the message they need to hear. It's like, what can we do? How can that person live the best life? And, um, and so that, that's where you know, this whole the complexity between scientists and clinicians gets murky and trying to keep things in perspective so things may get taken out of context. Oh, hey, I heard so-and-so say this, this. And somebody may, since it sounds good to them, they may gravitate to that and hold on to that and, and use that as, hey, you know, here's, here's a study that shows my BMI is healthy or whatever. Versus having a broader look at it or a physician may say and, and, and may see one day and say, you know, we got to get you back down here. We got to get you there without taking into account something that's, that's personal to the person and uh, whatever. And so working with where they are. And I'm, my issue is I think that needs to be a dialogue and a compassionate dialogue between the patient and the clinician. The patient needs to be open to things and accept the information from the physician. And the physician needs to be compassionate and understanding that what the, the message they're delivering to that, that individual, their patient, uh, may have some baggage that's attached that's not from the physician. It's a life experience, um, and you know some may go back to the movie. Uh, I think the movie is called Precious. I, I don't remember, um, but some life issues that may come in. So it may be familial, and maybe there's some issues that that uh, abuse or whatever that, that that person experienced, or comments from the community at large via social media, whatever that that are problematic, um, and how that that's received, and so. A physician said, you know, you may deliver a message and the, the patient's in, in kind of shock and in, in receiving that. And the healthcare provider's like, what did I say? Because they may not have had that response before. So it's, it's, and I know both patients and healthcare providers are doing the best they can. Good providers are not intending to be malicious or lead to unintended consequences or lead to frustrations on the patient's side. Um, and so, but, you know, clinicians and, and healthcare providers are human, just like the patients are human. The patient may have, a, may have had a bad day, and so that day that's just like, they're just on edge, and everything that somebody says to them just kind of sets them off. And so, again, that's not the healthcare provider's issue. It's just people come into a healthcare setting, and they, they bring that with them, bring you with, bring to that session recent issues, historical issues, experience, et cetera, on both sides, on both sides of the, the table of the, the whatever, <laughs> the, the, the clinic room, I guess we'll leave it at that. Um, so overall, I would just say, 
I think it gets to a point in which weight become does become a problem. Uh, when gravitational forces lead to breathing issues, so you're laying down and, and you have just an immense amount of weight on your chest. You know, it's one of those things where there's potential you could have 20 to 30 pounds on your chest that you're having to move when you lay down, sleep, whatever, leading to sleep apnea, uh, rest, sleep quality issues, just like from a joint perspective, putting the, the weight... Issues of falls, issues of uh, um, mobility in general, just going against gravity, um, you know, climbing stairs, for example, needing to take an elevator instead of uh, taking the stairs, escalator, um, needing to sit down, take a break, those kinds of things. Uh, and being, being open to, you know, what, do, what should I do to get, to be healthier. Am I willing to do that? And the answer is no, it's no. You know, example, I don't know if this is similar or not, but it's like smoking or drinking or other issues. Ultimately, it's the, the individual's responsibility to make that decision. So if somebody doesn't want to quit smoking, you know, we can do all we want to, to stop it, but you get to a point of the, the costs of trying to prevent everything outweigh and it's like educate you realize what you're doing is harmful for you yes okay path is made carry on i will support you as long as i can i'll do whatever i can to work with that work around that but um that's that's the choice you made and, and we see that a lot and you know and that's a, that's part of being human, is making choices and, and living with those consequences. Some good, some bad. So anyway. Um, so I'll just, I'll just kind of end with that. I think if we focus on the behaviors, let's focus on, so, so adopting that health therapy size thing, let's start with that and let weight follow. And, sing, and, then going, gosh, dang it, and then going back to kind of the study that recently came out, you can have some changes that occur regardless of weight. And there are several others, um, studies that have shown changes in, in health outcomes without changes in weight. And so adopting healthy behaviors, I think is a good first step. Then let, um, let them gain confidence, let them see that there, those behaviors lead to benefit. And then maybe, maybe you'll see a change in, in body composition. Uh, maybe not, um, but then take steps, use those steps. And you know, lean on the healthcare providers, dietitians, um, and others who kind of work with that, who are qualified to, to understand the, the eating behavior issues and potential pitfalls of those things, and you know, potentially needing to work with a mental health provider to, to get around food issues, food fears and dealing with fat shaming and those kinds of things. And so anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you. And if there's anything else on this topic you want to, to hear, I'm happy to, to look into it and give my, my best reaction to it. And, uh, you know, for that, you know, going back to just his, historical, one of the things I would use in class was uh, Penn and Teller. I don't know if you, you know Penn and Teller. It's fortunate to see them in person. Uh, enjoy their... Uh, their delivery, their entertainment, but they also had a show, a show called Bull Blank, uh, not blank, but um, in which they, they did an obesity issue scenario. And so they, they talked about some things, some of these similar types of things. And so uh, I'll see if I can put a link to that here in the, the description down below, because I think it's, it's an interesting take. I'm not saying it's the best take, but because it is, there are some humor things and they do, I think, push things too far in some directions. But in essence, it's, it may give a different per perspective than um, what you may be used to. So anyway, thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking it out. And have, have a great day. And until next time, see you later.